So, all right, my name is Matthew. Um, I'm an exercise science major with a minor in communications, and I'm from the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Some of the reasons why I chose Brockport is because, like, I was looking, I was very interested within the field of exercise science, and I saw that Brockport had one of the best exercise science programs. Like, it was, it wasn't as expensive as other SUNY schools, and it wasn't too far away from home. So those were the main factors that made me choose Brockport. Um, my name is Jessica Jovell. I am a international studies and communications um, major. I initially started off with an international business major because uh, Brockport has one of the best uh, international business uh, programs. And but I realized that it was very difficult. So no, as a struggling student back then, I couldn't. Um, I didn't want to be dismissed from Brockport, so I changed my major, and I'm actually really happy with the major I'm in right now. For me, and the reason why I decided to run um, is because I think BSU could do a lot better in terms of like being representative of the students, and I'm very passionate about like being involved within the community and just trying to um, seek better changes within Brockport. And I think being a um, BSG president would allow me to have the power to make some of the changes that I would like to see. Um, I, this is something I've been wanting to do actually for the past two years. And I decided to do it this year to run for it for next year because as someone that's a student and kind of sees the lack of communication between BSG and the students, I feel like I'm very, that's very disappointing to see. And, um, I feel like students should be able to take more advantage of what their being, you know, opportunities and resources that college has to offer. Well, I'll start on that. Um, I believe I am a qualified candidate because I have many different leadership experiences in many different realms. You know, I was the vice president of the Association of Latinx American Students. I'm currently a SUNY SA advocacy coordinator of BSG and I'm involved in many BSG committees. I've contributed towards expanding the first Latino fraternity on Broadford. I'm part of the I'm part of C Step. So me having all of these different leadership experiences have, has developed my skills socially and professionally, and I believe I, these skills have made me capable to be uh, the next BSG president. Well, I don't have any BSG involvement, but as someone who, like I mentioned before, is a regular student, um, I've been part of clubs, and I'm a, currently a captain for the Ultimate Frisbee team, and I have been advocating for, and part of the Pride Club, the, the Broader Act Club, um, and the Environmental Club. And those things I'm very passionate about, and I just feel like, as a regular, regular student, I want to get more involved with the, within BSG. Okay, I will start off with that. <laughs> um, our first initiative is to um, create a top-down and upward communication towards a collabor collaborative communication between BSG and students. Because there's, like I was saying, and I keep mentioning it, um, there's like such a lack of communication. And I feel like if that's the first thing that is fixed, um, many other things will fall into place. So that's something that we want to work on, create communication channels, departments and other, you know, reaching out to different departments, students being able to communicate with BSG more, BSG communicating with students, and just kind of having that communication in place. And to expand on like improving the communication, one of the ways we can do that is by informing more students of the campus-wide committees that exist on campus. There are many campus-wide committees on campus, but students do not know about it. And it's mainly ran about you know, by um, faculty and administration, and they um, meet to make decisions about what's in the best interest of the students. But it's kind of hard to get what's in the best interest of the students if there's no student representation on these committees. So some of the ways that we plan to like um, promote these committees is by 
word of mouth, social media, flyers, and other forms of communication, implementing it into our fall officer training, working with other organizations that have a large student population, such as Res Life, Greek Life, the Educational Opportunities Program, and just making sure that we have a strong outreach to students and making sure that they're getting involved in these committees. Another thing that uh, we want to work on is underappreciated clubs. Um, like we keep mentioning, not many students know, not many clubs know uh, what resources to take advantage of, like what BSG has already offers. So we want to make sure that within clubs, the current presidents, officers, and vice presidents pass on that information to their next uh, year's electees so they can um, know what to do and how to get in contact with BSG as well. Another um, huge priority for us is to uh, strengthen the diversity and inclusion initiatives within BSG. Now, a lot of um, communities within Brockport do not feel represented by BSG, and uh, that's a problem because, uh, where the, because it's the Brockport student government, and as the Brockport student government, they should be a representative of everybody on campus. So, one of the things that we want to do is be uh, is have more diversity and inclusion within our activities because like our, our the BSG activities is the most attractive to students so uh, incorporating things like activities co diversity activities coordinators would definitely be a good step so that way we could have celebrations during Hispanic Heritage Month Mental Health Awareness Month Native American Heritage Month and so on other ways we want to um, improve the diversity and inclusion is, is um, having a conscious effort and seeing demographic trends within our organization and uh, seeing um, if there's a diverse um, set of employees within each department um, and making sure that faculty are developing a cultural competency and incorporating that in their curriculum. We definitely want to work with the diversity office a lot in order to ensure that and other things like having off-campus events so we could interact with more community members more because our, and our events shouldn't be just like mainly targeted for students. And the last thing we want to do is to have semesterly trainings on microaggressions and implicit biases. Um, we also feel strongly that this ties up with the underappreciated clubs. There's underappreciated clubs that are very uh, diverse as well, but they are not getting the prison, the uh, presentation, the representation that they need and so I guess this is something that we want to, we're very passionate about. Uh, another thing that we are very heavily focused on is environmental issues. Um, Brockport already has, is doing a lot about it, uh, but we want to improve on those initiatives that they already have in place. For example, uh, they already are working on replacing plastic um, straws and cups and every year I believe the number is 3,000 that um, the damnation process of plastics but want to keep improving that so at one point the school is plastic free. Um, also we want to create more outdoor events during nicer weather. Uh, I know that a lot of students like to be outdoors so it'd be nice to have more um, outdoor activities where clubs, students, they can all volunteer, it's all up to them, but we want to offer that to them so they can take advantage of that. Um, another big issue that many students have a problem with is the parking issue. Now, the parking issue has been existing for many, many years and we have some suggestions on how we can make parking better. So, one of, no, so as I was researching on how other schools have, have what they done to uh, improve the uh, parking issue is to offer um, daily, um, daily passes for, because when the students buy semesterly um, passes or annual, or annual passes, um, they, they're going to park at a parking spot every day just because they paid for that annual parking. But if you do have the option to uh, um, have daily parking passes, then the students will only feel the need to like park in the parking lot when they need to park there. 
and um, to create some uh, like uh, creative alternatives. Like I've heard of the, of like the University of London, they uh, uh, encourage their students like not to bring their cars uh, for um, to school, and if they pledge not to bring their cars, then. Uh, they could get like 35 hours of free zip car service or to have um, a pledge to ride the bike. So that's another um, way we could um, improve the parking situation. And another way that I looked up that I thought was really cool was to uh, be able to uh, fix the parking through a mobile app. Now, I've heard of this app called IntelliPark. Now, I'm not the biggest tech savvy guy, but I, when I was looking it up, they had like scanners on each parking spot all of the parking all of the parking spots are like numbered and like the scanners can scan whether or not um there's a car in the spot and uh, you could have have it up on your phone as well and it'll tell you uh, which spots are available so uh, that would, that's even great for the environment as well because students like you know, always circling around the parking lot now they're um emitting a lot of carbon emissions so no, if you if you already know where to go because like there's an app telling you where there's a free parking where we can also help the environment by reducing the amount of carbon emissions we're setting off into the air. Um, this would also be a great way for commuter students because I know for a fact when they drive here from their homes let's say 20 minutes 45 minutes doesn't, doesn't matter how long it is uh, they take at least another 15 minutes on their car trying to find a parking, a parking spot during um, parking, uh, parking plots here. Uh, another thing, like I just said, commuter, commuter students, um, we actually want to better the policy or kind of not change, but uh, improve the policy already put in place for uh, students because during unsafe weather conditions, New York State law says you're not supposed to close school. Only the governor can give out that information. Uh, approve that. So uh, we are want to get in contact with SUNY SA, which is uh, State University of New York Student Assembly, and we want to propose a resolution. SUNY SA represents over 800,000 overall students, and what the resolution we want to propose is kind of hear the college administrators, students voicing or advocating for that uh, law to be changed it'll be pretty difficult for Governor Cuomo to ignore 800,000 students. Um, so that would be something that we want to work on for just for safety purposes. And um, yeah, just for the safety of the students. Yeah, definitely. We would, we would also like to note that these are our main initiatives, but we're not limited to just these issues. Yeah. We do plan on accomplishing everything that we've just said, but we are aware that there are other issues on campus, and we would definitely um, try our best to work on every issue that we can. So, I would say that I definitely do. Um, so when I was the vice president of Alas, I, I felt like I was able to create change within Alas by you know, collaborating with many different organizations. We collab with organizations within the Cultural Council, the Academic Council, the Service Council, Greek Life. Um, and uh, we, just, we just worked so hard in terms of like advocacy, advocating for undocumented immigrants, um, advocating for the Latinx community. And we were everywhere with our events. And like for the first time in Alas's history, like the part in the e-board that I was on, we worked so hard that we got the biggest award that we was striving to get, which was Organization of the Year. We were very proud to um, achieve that. Another thing that I have done was contributed towards finding towards um, expanding the first Latino fraternity on campus, which is Lambda Sigma Upsilon Latino Fraternity Incorporated. So uh, um, I. I I'm proud of being part of that movement because it was a huge step to uh, um, bring the first Latino fraternity here. So yeah, those are my experiences with cha creating change within my environment. Um, the only change I feel like I've created here in Brockport is just advocating for different clubs. Like I mentioned, the Pride Club, the Rotor Act Club, uh, the Environmental Club, and of course, I'm very passionate with Ultimate Frisbee. and. Um, we 
have reached out to so many other different clubs too and just having them getting more involved in campus. We've done um, apple picking days where we all get together, we go out there and not, we also done um, with the environmental club, we've done volunteer and we go out there and pick up garbage from the streets and kind of just do and volunteer work, community work. And not only that, that brings more students in who aren't even part of the clubs and it creates kind of like a family type of atmosphere and it also creates a good sense of networking as well um, yeah that's the only change I pretty much been involved in here for as a back home I wouldn't say I did much because I was a very busy high school student but if I were to mention something I was really proud of it would be um, go into Village Court and kind of hearing what their initiatives are back there, what resolutions they're trying to bring into, like I said, environmental issues, um, what they can do for unfunded um, families around the community, how we as a community can help them. And that's the only parts that I've been involved in. That, that's a long list. <laughs> for, for me personally, like, um, I've, I've been involved in uh, like Brockport for, uh, for a few years now and like me being Vice President of ALAS, bringing, LS, bringing Lambda Sigma Upsilon Latino Fraternity Incorporated, being part of the advocacy department on, on Brockport. I have advocated for many groups such as people of color, women, undocumented immigrants, people of lower socioeconomic statuses, people of different religious beliefs, and so on. And uh, definitely, and, and I always try my best to like learn about groups that I'm not aware of, so I can always like strengthen my um, characteristic as an advocate, because I think it, in every, in every community needs some sort of advocacy, and I'm, and I'm passionate about that. So I, so I always try to make it a point to like learn about as many different groups as I can. Um. I already mentioned this, I feel like, but I do have a lot of experience in advocating. Um, I've done advocating for ALAS as well. Um, I've done advocating for the Pride Club. That's something to me, that to me is very important. It's very crucial to me because I feel like there's a lot of discrimination against the LGBTQ, uh, the LGBTQ plus community. And as a bisexual woman, that to me is very personal. And I want to make sure that this, um, the LGBT community as a whole feels safe here in Brockport, that they know that there's people here that are representing them. Um, on top of that, I do uh, advocate for women of color, um, men of color, the Latin, the Latin uh, X community, um, as well as my peers. Like I said, Ultimate Frisbee Club is open to any bond. So is the Environmental Club, the, the Runner Act Club, I can never pronounce it. <laughs> but um, the Runner Act, club actually is open to everyone on campus. Um, it's a community service club. So we go out there and we do things within the community. It's not just within the Brockport campus, it's with the entire community. Um, what else? The environmental club is pretty much the same thing as our border act club. Even though the border act club focuses more on community services and environmental focuses more on environmental issues, you can still see that, that they're pretty much working towards the same goal. And that's the only thing that I feel like I'm very passionate about. Running for BSG is important to me because I'm, I'm passionate about being representative of like every student on campus and making sure to improve the Brockport community. And I've, I've had some tough times in Brockport and, and there, there, there are some things that I feel like should be done differently and, and I think that's just like a realistic view of being a student, you know, um, we, ne we need uh, leaders and leaders within the student government to see uh, like what's happening on campus and how can we make things better and, uh, I, and uh, I personally want to um, be, use the BSG presidency to make the community better. Um, so I feel like running as for BSG vice president is very important to me because not like he was not like he just said this 
about being passionate, but it's also about looking up for every student. It doesn't matter what your background is, doesn't matter where, um, doesn't matter if you're either poor or wealthy. To me, that doesn't matter as long as you know that you're being represented by uh, the college, you know, that you're coming here for, looking for your career path. Um, you know, as vice president, if elected, I also want to be more involved with the students in, um, you know, if they graduate, what are their plans during, like, you know, when they become alumni? How can they help out Brockport? And I want that to be the, Brockport to be the best experience that they ever had here. Um, as well as, well, one thing that actually, I know this is a very sensitive topic, but I feel like it should be brought up. Um, I want the university police and students relationship to strengthen uh, because we see that that is not um, happening right now. And every student should be feeling safe on campus. And I feel like university police has been doing that, but then again, there's different issues. Um, how would I say it? There's like tension and it's understandable to understand that those students are feeling unsafe, but we want to strengthen that. We want to we want the UP to also be more diverse because um, the uh, they actually held a community address uh, probably two weeks ago, and that it was very heartbreaking to see how there's no trust between university police and the students, and I feel like that's the main issue to work on, but. That's uh, that's all on us. That's on us to do that. Not just like when I say on us, it's for all of us, for the community to be involved in, and that's why I feel like VSG is very important. Okay, I'm gonna start off with that. There's this thing. Um, it's a, a vote yes uh, year, so we need students to vote. Um, not just, you know, at the end of the day, whoever wins, wins. And they, uh, whatever initiatives they want to support, that's on them, they will decide. But there's this, uh, since I mentioned the vote yes, uh, that means that we need students to certainly go out there and at the end of the day, whatever they vote for, that's fine, but they're at the little end of the bottom of whatever yeah, the side is. Um, there's going to be a vote yes check mark and they're going to need to vote yes because if they don't vote yes then that means a student activity fee there's not going to be i'm not sure if it's shortened or if it's cut or if it's not going to be there i um yeah. so basically what vote yes is is so you know, students will be voting on whether or not they want to um continue to have the student activity fee uh required fee so um, if we, if BSG does not have the student activity fee, we would not be able to support students as much as they do now because the student activity fee provides many things such as our campus-wide events such as concerts, snow day, eagle day, um, safe ride, priority services such as talent TV, the point, yeah. um, the Brockport downtown, um, consultations with a lawyer, echo. So uh, the student activity fee um, provides a lot and it's, I believe the quality of life for students will go down if we did not have the student activity fee. So that, that is a major reason why students should get out and vote because you know, we, won't, we won't be able to provide everything that we do without the student activity fee. Students won't be able to get to experience what exactly um, you know, other clubs put out there. Also some clubs where are going to be going under some tough times if they don't get that fee uh, because they won't have enough funding for it. So it's very important for students to get out there and vote and especially vote yes. And do you have like any final message you'd like to say? Mm. It's a good one. Well, my message would be, you know, at the end of the day, if like I just mentioned, go out there, vote. It's ultimately up to you who you want to vote for. If you believe in our initiatives, great. You understand what we want to do. You understand that we're representing you, that we want to represent you, and we want to help you and vote. So, you know, 
I'll go out there and vote. But we understand that, you know, our competitors are also kind of giving out the same initiatives that we are. So ultimately, at the end of the day, who you believe for, go out there and vote. Regardless, at the end of the day, we just want you to vote yes as well. And that's yeah. all I have to say. My message will be to students what is to keep your Brockport student government representatives accountable. If you feel like that there's issues that need to be tackled on and we're not tackling those issues, then keep them accountable. And bring, bring it up to uh, your representatives and make, it, make sure that um, make sure that they're at least putting in an effort to uh, you know, work on the issues that you feel like are important to you. So yeah, no, because that is, uh, I feel like that is a problem between BSG and the students. There's not a lot of communication and there definitely needs to be an, an improvement. And uh, I think um, if we do have better communication, um, we, we will be able to be better representatives of the students and students will be more satisfied with all of the efforts that be a sheep pursue. Yeah, the more you bring out, the more you voice your opinions, the better. So that's my message as well. Like, go out there, voice your opinions, you know, bring up any concerns that you have and I'm pretty positive there's always a solution. There's always a solution to any issue.